All right, looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another Zuzin session. How about that? But you didn't expect that shit to happen. Hello, 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 Kumbetka. What's up? What's up? So let's make a little bit of an announcement and officially start the stream. Uh, Red Circle live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch.tv? That's a very interesting question. Today we are porting a game in Jai to WebAssembly, right? So I'm going to give the link to Twitch where we're doing all that. And I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. And there we go. The stream has been officially started. So uh, for several streams, we've been developing a game in Jai. Jai is a language that is being created by Jonathan Blow, the creator of the Witness and Braid. And we're better testing this language essentially, right? So he allowed us to stream um, us programming that language. So, and I've been developing a game in that language and uh, let's take a look at the game itself, right? So it's a very simple game. Uh, it's a clone of uh, Breakout. So you can find the source code of this game in here. I'm gonna copy paste it in the chat and I'm gonna put that in the description for anyone who's watching on YouTube. Uh, right, so I'm gonna go to Jaybreak. Uh, I think I already like, yeah, so already have some builds in there. And I'm going to go and do the build. So I'm gonna build the first Jai. Uh, there we go. And uh, I'm gonna run the release build, right? So this is how the game looks like, right? So, and uh, you can play it, right? So you can control with WASD and you can start the game by pressing space. And there you go. So it looks pretty cool, in my opinion, right? Because I added this uh, particle effect. I'm really proud of it. I also like uh, how I found the font that actually like fits the game, the game aesthetic really well. So uh, it's overall cool game, but it's not finished. It doesn't even have a game over condition, right? So there are some lives in here, but if you lose all of the life, it doesn't really stop, right? It just lets you continue playing. It's just something that is not fully implemented, uh, right? And uh, yeah, so it's more of a, like a technological demo, like it's me playing with the language itself, right? So, and it uses the built-in graphics library. This language, the standard library of the language comes with the graphics library, which is really close to SDL, uh, right? So it's own sort of like a homebrew SDL. And uh, I'm using that specific library. And what I want you to do for quite some time while developing this game is that I want to be able to share that game Right, so I can give you the executables, uh, which is fine, but they will work probably on a very specific distro of Linux. And it's not particularly cross-platform, and if, if you have a Windows, I probably have to make a Windows build. It's not particularly convenient as well. So I was thinking, can I actually compile this game to WebAssembly? Right, so not just compile, but also port, because you cannot just like compile thing to WebAssembly. You have to also port this entire thing and adapt and stuff like that. Unfortunately, this language does not really support uh, does not really support WebAssembly out of the box. Right, maybe it will in the future, but right. Right now it is not supported uh, but you can through a sequence of hacks actually compile still compile the code to WebAssembly and this is something that we did on one of the previous streams right so uh, let me actually show you uh, there was like a sort of like a proof of the concept uh, that I've done uh, Jai wasn't which demonstrated how you can compile Jai code to WebAssembly you can find this thing in here uh, right, so and I'm going to also put that in the description for anyone who's interested. So source code of the game, right, and POC for compiling uh, Jai to Wasm, right, so this is a POC. So essentially the idea is the following, the compiler itself has a very cool flag. So the flag is called uh, LLVM options output LLVM intermediate representation, right? If you set it to true, the compiler will, on top of generating the ob uh, like object files, it will also generate a file with intermediate representation, um, like LLVM intermediate representation that is used by the compiler. And from there, you can take that intermediate representation and through a sequence of different tools, you can actually 
actually end up with a WebAssembly code that you can then load in a browser and actually execute. Right. So again, the language itself doesn't really support any of that. This is a huge hack, but you still can do that. Right. So and also it will try to call to some of the uh, libc libraries, libc library functions, and you will probably have to implement them yourself in JavaScript. But you still can do that. It is still technically possible. Uh, let's take a look at this actually proof of concept because it's rather interesting. So it doesn't really do much. Um, let me let me actually go there. So uh, where is that Jai wasm? So essentially we have a program, right? Uh, that has this function, right? So this pro uh, this is a function that accepts two numbers, sums them up, and returns them. Our goal in this proof of concept was to actually uh, compile it to WebAssembly, load it into the browser, and execute it in the browser. Right. Even though the compiler itself doesn't really support doing this kind of stuff, we still uh, decided to do that. So essentially, uh, let's try to compile this entire thing. Um, so bin j and I'm going to do first. Right. Here's an interesting thing. The build script, the build program uh, actually detects all of the assembly inline assembly blocks. Uh, detecting them and getting rid of them is actually extremely important because you can't translate them to WebAssembly, right? Even though we managed to generate uh, LLVM intermediate representation, if we'll try to compile that LLVM intermediate representation, it will not do that uh, because it's supposed to complain. Yeah, it will complain about uh, register constraints and WebAssembly doesn't even have any registers. That's what's interesting about this entire thing. WebAssembly doesn't have any registers. And this is because all of these like constraints, register constraints and assembly code comes from the from the inline assembly blocks that you have to get rid of. And that's why in here, all right, so we detect them so you can go there and actually get rid of them. Right. So we even provided a patch Right. It's actually kind of funny. So the, the proof of the concept provides the patch that you have to apply to the GI distribution to actually get rid of all of the uh, all of the uh, assembly inline assembly blocks so you can compile uh, like to WebAssembly. Right. So this is something that you have to do manually. And this is actually shows how how much the language officially does not support WebAssembly, even though it is technically possible through intermediate representation of LVM. You, you just still can do that because it's not supported. Okay, so and this is something that we'll have to do. Okay, so let's actually go through all of these places. Uh, I have a new uh, distribution of Jai. I have a new version, new beta version. So it still doesn't have like all of these blocks uh, removed. So what I usually do, right? I introduce a, a special compile time variable, right? Uh, which is called wasm, and it indicates whether we compile to wasm or not. If we are currently compiled to wasm, right? So what do I have to do? Uh, let me take a look at the patch. So I probably have to do the following thing. I have to replace the implementation of this fu uh, function compare and swap with non-atomic one, right? So I know that is, this is a completely incorrect way of implementing uh, compare and swap because it's probably not atomic, but I don't really care because I'm not going to be calling that function in WebAssembly anyway. I just need to get rid of the assembly block uh, so it like the compiler, the translation tool does not complain about it. That's the only goal I have in here, right? So that's why I'm just like re replacing it with whatever like kind of works cl closely to that. Um, okay. So also at the beginning, I want you to have something like this, right? So, so this is going to be true. And I guess that is it. So let me go to the compilation. So it does not like what I have in here because I didn't open this thing properly. All right. So, okay, this one was fixed. This one, as far as I know, we can straight up just disable it. Right. So if not wasm, uh, right, if not wasm, only then include that. If it is wasm, doesn't matter. Uh, right, and the third block, uh, the third block in here, we can also get rid of that. If not wasm, right, so if not wasm, 
uh, exclude this entire thing completely. So, uh, okay, so after that, if I try to translate that to WebAssembly, it should work, right? So it takes some time, but eventually it works and you end up with, um, you know, WASM file, like an actual WASM file that you can load in a browser, right? So we also have load.js, which takes that uh, WASM file, implements some of the like libc functions that it depends on, right? And then tries to call uh, call the function sum. As you can see, function sum in here have like a really weird suffix. And the problem with the suffix, by the way, is that every time you recompile the program, it generates a different suffix. So if I try to load this program now, it will not work, right? Because the sum probably has a completely different suffix now. We can even check it out. Right, so uh, let me see if I try to find the sum. Yeah, so now it has this suffix. So this is one of the problems with a compiling Jira to WebAssembly is that the, the function names, they always like mangled differently. Uh, I don't really know like what's the, what's the rules of mangling um, of those functions, uh, but uh, it is what it is. So we'll have to replace that manually. It, it's also uh, kind of easy to implement some sort of a function, right? Like find name by prefix, right? Where you accept exports. Uh, like these experts of WebAssembly and the prefix and basically find the functions with that prefix regardless of their suffix. Uh, but I think we're going to implement that a little bit later. So this is something that I wanted to have, but I can just replace this thing manually anyway. Okay, so now we need to start the server, right? So HTTP um, server 6969. Uh, so uh, this is weird because this is Python 3. Okay, so Python 3 should be working, and if I go there, right, if I go there, as you can see, it says 69, right, which is exactly what we expected to see, because we called function sum, and we provided 34, 35, right, and if we take a look at the implementation of that function, as you can see, it just adds them together, so this is the, like, final final result, we executed uh, a code, a JI code in a browser, even though the JI compiler, the official JI compiler does not support that yet. I'm pretty sure it's going to support that in the future because it is relatively easy to compile this thing to WebAssembly already without any support. So there's no reason to not do that in the future, right? So yeah. So that's basically the proof of the concept. So. The goal of today's stream, the goal of today's stream is to actually take that proof of concept and apply to the game that I've been developing for quite some time, right? So essentially, I want to take this game and port it to WebAssembly, right? I want to compile it to WebAssembly module, then load it in a browser and play it in a browser. So that's the goal of today's stream, right? So basically, so this is the backstory, the entire backstory of this stuff. Right, so uh, let me take a look. So we have a, a couple of subscriptions. Thank you, everyone, for resubscribing. I good duke. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Matthews, uh, Max Divs, thank you so much. And Valigo, thank you so much for subscription. Um, welcome, welcome, everyone. And Brooklyn Def, thank you for, for Twitch Prime subscription. All right, so uh, let's try to actually do that. So how are we going to be implementing all of that in WebAssembly, right? Because the game itself, as I already mentioned, is using the graphics library that comes with uh, the distribution of Jai, right? And that graphics library um, uses OpenGL backend, right? It uses OpenGL backend. And uh, so that means we have to use some sort of WebGL or we have to port this entire library to uh, to like a JavaScript API or something like that. So this actually sounds pretty complicated if you think about that. Right, but it's not really that complicated because in the game, apart from rendering the text, right, so we're going to talk about the text a little bit later, but apart from rendering the text, we are not using anything except fill a specific rectangle. Right, that's sort of the only API of the library that we use in the entire game except the text. 
text could be handled differently. It's a separate topic. But if we just like focus only on something that is not text, it's only rectangles. We see only rectangles. So what if we take the entire logic of the game that has nothing to do with the graphics library and abstract away graphics library, even though graphics library itself is already an abstraction over OpenGL, we can abstract away the graphics library as well and expose a single function called fill rectangle. Right. So the game will depend only on one API function fill rectangle and depending on the platform whether it's native platform or a web platform it's going to be implemented differently in case of the native platform it will call to the graphics library that we're using in case of the web we're going to call to the fill rectangle of the canvas context right but apart from that the logic doesn't really care about specific graphics libraries so we should be able to like separate that logic relatively easily so uh, that way we don't even have to port anything, right? So we just like have a single API call, fill a rectangle. And I'm pretty sure in 2022 browsers are capable of filling a specific rectangle because that's what they do all the time anyway, right? So yeah, that's the idea. That's the idea. All right. So to do that, uh, to do that, we'll need to... Um, like separate the the logic of the game right so right now the entire game is located within the entire file right it is located within the entire file so i want to create something like game jai and i'm gonna keep the entire logic of the game in that file and everything that is not part of the logic of the game that is part of the sort of like platform right it's part of the platform is going to be located in in the main file right <clears throat> All right. Uh, so maybe it makes sense to actually draw the diagram of sort of like the architecture of the game that I plan, right? Sort of the architecture. Um, mm -mm -mm. Right. So the game uh, is going to be a separate module right which doesn't really care uh, about any specific platform it doesn't really care whether it's executing on windows executing on linux executing on x86 64 cpu processor or arm processor or in web assembly or in a firefox or in internet explorer it doesn't really care uh, it has a, a certain specific api for instance it will have methods like render right uh, and this is a function that should be called by the platform every time you need to render the next frame. Uh, it will also have update method, right? Update method that accepts delta time in seconds. And it will be called every time the platform wants to update the state of the game when the timer, like sort of, um, how to say that, um, the timer fires off, right? So because you like every frame, you need to update the state of the game to get to the next state and stuff like that. And also we're going to have methods like key press, key, maybe key down, right? Let's call it key down. Uh, it's when the user presses the key regardless of the platform and key up. There we go. So these are the methods that the game module exposes and they are supposed to be called by the platform, right? So, and we're going to have uh, the platform, right? So this is going to be the platform. So let, let me actually make it a little bit more uh, bright, maybe even like closer to here. So this is the platform, platform. And the platform uh, calls all of these four methods right it calls all of these four methods periodically right it calls render and update on each frame uh and it calls uh, it looks really really ugly i don't like that right it calls up a uh, key up and down every time the user presses the key right or releases the key and it uh, calls update and render every frame to update the state of the game and uh you know render the game and stuff like that so the platform itself 
also exposes some of the functions, right? So it will expose fill uh, rect, right? So my, my hands are shaking for some reason. Uh, fill rect. It, okay, it looks ugly. Fill uh, rect, right? And you know what's interesting? It's the responsibility of the game to call this function. So essentially, the platform organizes the loop, right? It organizes the loop, uh, rather the event loop. So essentially, it loops into itself. And uh, then it periodically calls render. And on calling render, it initiates the process within the game that calls fill rectangles. So the platform and game form this positive feedback loop. Right, so the platform asks the game, okay, render itself. Game starts to render itself, but it doesn't know how to render the rectangle. So it asks the platform, fill the rectangle, right? So the platform tells the game when to initiate rendering. And then it also helps the game to render the rectangle because the game by itself doesn't know when to start rendering and how to render. All, all, all it knows is the logic of the game itself. Everything else is abstracted away by the platform. So does that make sense? So that's basically going to be the architecture. And uh, here we're essentially going to have uh, several implementations of this interface. So this forms the interface of the platform. And uh, so the first implementation will already have it. It's an implementation that uses the simp. By the way, simp is the name of the library, of the gra graphics library that comes with Jai, right? So this is the first implementation of that platform. Uh, right, so that we already have. And the second one that we're going to have is going to be wasm, uh, wasm slash canvas, canvas as, as the way of rendering implementation of that specific platform. Uh, right, something like this. And there we go. So this is one implementation and this is another implementation, right? So that's the basic architecture of the game, right? So this thing is not implemented yet. So Wasm Canvas is not implemented, but we already have Simp. Uh, and uh, to actually sort of like um, form this architecture, how to say that? Right, so what I need to do right now is I need to separate the game and the platform because right now the platform and the game is located in a single file, right? So both of them are located in a single file. And this is what I'm about to do. I'm about to separate them in two separate files to actually implement the idea of separation of the game logic and the game platform, right? And then once I separated them, once I outlined the interface, uh, I can go ahead and implement the, uh, the WebAssembly stuff. Uh, all right, so that's basically the idea. That's basically the idea. All right. Uh, so do we have any other subscriptions? I didn't see any subscriptions. Okay, cool. So let's continue. I suppose. Uh, now, uh, where is my, I'm going to create like literally a file called game.jai, right? So game.jai and I'm going to move everything there, right? So here is the target. Uh, target is just like the bar that you're supposed to hit with the ball. Then, uh, we have a particle. You already seen the particles, it's the particles that fly around when you hit the target. Uh, we also have a state of the game. State is basically the current state of the game, right? Where the, you're being ready, where whether you're currently playing or it's a death or it's a game over, even though we didn't play the game over, but still it's just like a state machine, right? Any game can be described as a, uh, as a state machine, right? So you can be in the menu, uh, then you can could be preparing for the level, then you play in the level, then you die in, and so on and so forth. It's just like a state machine, and that enumeration is basically that state machine. So, and then we have a bunch of global variables. Those global variables are the state, uh, like the actual state of the game, right? So the current position of the ball and stuff like that. And here come the, the functions, right? So here are all of the functions in here. Nothing particularly special. So then we initialize the state. We also have the notion of the rectangle. So to help us to mathematically work with all of that. Uh, right, so here is the rectangle. Then we have a rectangle, a constructor, constructor, constructor. 
Uh, right, so a bunch of other rectangles. Right. So all of that is part of the logic. I think I can just like safely, uh, safely move all of that. All right, so this is update as well. So this is basically the method that we'll be exposing. Uh, this is the rendering and I guess that is basically it. All right, so I, I basically, I literally moved everything. Right, I literally moved everything. So now this is basically the sim platform and it organizes the event loop. And it, as you can see, it calls different uh, sort of methods of the game logic, right? Different methods of the game logic. So it, it works exactly uh, as I already explained. So let me save this thing. And if I try to compile this entire game, it will not work, right? So it's going to be opt jai bin jai and this is going to be first dot jai okay so none of the functions are there and this is because we don't compile that file along with everything so let's go to the build script right so this is the build script and we have two builds a build release and build debug right so we have to probably do that on both of them right so add build uh, build file right so this is l build file i'm going to add game.jai and I'm gonna do the same thing for the debug build right mm -hmm. so let's try to uh, to rebuild the entire thing and see if it didn't break okay it didn't break this is actually pretty cool it didn't break so the next thing I suppose is going to be applying that proof of concept right applying that proof of concept to that specific game file right uh, so here i have like a separated logic and i just want to take this entire logic and compile it to WebAssembly. even though this entire thing has a little bit of a little bit of like a simp calls but that's fine uh the compiler will tell us where to move things around right so i think i actually copied more stuff into the logic so some of this stuff has to be in the platform for sure but again as soon as we start compiling the compiler will tell us that what stuff to move back into the platform right so here we have sort of like a like a border which uh between which we're going to be actually moving the code so some code should actually go to the game or maybe some code in the game should go into the platform it, it will be obvious as soon as you will start compiling things Okay, so let me take a look at the build script. So here we're building release and here we're building debug. So for now, I actually want to disable both of the builds, right? We're not building neither release nor debug, uh, right? And I'm going to introduce something like build wasm, right? So build wasm, right? So we're only going to be building wasm for now. So to build wasm, so I'm going to go to my proof of concept for Jaya wasm and in the build script, I'm going to take all of that stuff. So here I create the workspace and here I set up all of the necessary flags, right? I set up all of the necessary flags and then I add the compilation. So what I need to do in here is I need to add game.jai, right? Um, do I need to do anything else? I don't think so. Right, so okay, I'm gonna just like try to compile that file to WebAssembly, right? Uh, to WebAssembly now. I'm gonna try to do that and okay, Vector4. As far as I know, Vector4 is located somewhere in the math, right? So uh, I will have to import math. Uh, what else do we have? A random get 0 to 1. Okay, so we'll probably have to include rand. Uh, I think it's called random. Yeah, there we go. So particle base velocity. Okay, this one is interesting. So we have a lot of constants, right? A lot of constants that are generated from params.conf, right? They're generated from params.conf. So th the thing we do, uh, right? We take this config file and for the release build, we generate this Jai code. As you can see, it just like maps one to one right sort of bakes all of the values in here and for the debug build we generate this thing which allows you to how to reload these values right so um so what we need to do i think i'm gonna for, for web assembly right now i'm not gonna implement any hot reloading of the configuration uh what we're gonna do we're gonna just bake them 
right? So, and once we implement the game that is actually working, we can think about hot reloading all of that stuff. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. Did anyone subscribe so far? Uh, do I need to acknowledge anyone who subscribed? Okay, so nobody subscribed so far. All right. So let's continue. Um, so where do we generate all of that stuff? All right. As you can see, here is the build release. And in the release, we open a file and we just generate everything. So what I'm thinking is that maybe I'm going to move the uh, config generation to separate files. Right. So we have things like gen params static, gen params dynamic. So maybe we're going to also call these functions like that. Right, gen params, uh, params static, right? And this is where we're gonna generate static parameters and stuff like that. So let me actually take this entire code. Uh -huh. Again, params static. There you go. Cool. Mm -hmm. So this is the release. Again, params static, and I just called in here. The reason is because I want to be able to call that code in here as well, right? So I want to be able to do again params static, right? And then add build file uh, again params static .gi to the workspace, right? So I want to be able to do this kind of stuff. But on top of that, we also have to include debug, right? Um, so it's going to be false. And I think that is it, essentially. I think that is it. It would be nice to also move dynamic there as well. So params uh, dynamic, right? So this is the dynamic stuff. And uh, let me let me see, where is the dynamic generation? Uh -huh. So here is the dynamic generation. And again, params dynamic, again, params dynamic okay so did we do everything correctly i think so let me recompile this entire thing okay so it doesn't complain about missing parameters because all of them are available so the only thing it complains now is the simp stuff you know what i'm thinking is that we can actually move clear render target to the platform right so we can say that this is the responsibility of the platform to um um, to actually clean the screen. Okay, so let's actually go jbreak.j. And right before we call the render, right before we call the render, we just clean everything. Okay, and also we have a very interesting thing here, thing in here, set shader for caller. So this is like a simp specific thing. And filling rectangles won't work if you first didn't set the shader for caller. But here's an interesting thing. As soon as you start doing anything with the text, it resets the shader. So if you fill the rectangle, then do some text stuff and start filling rectangle again, you should not forget to reset the shader for quarter. So which kind of like makes the API between the platform and the game a little bit more complicated. So do I have to make this also an API, uh, API function? I don't think so. So I, I feel like uh, we're going to do the following thing. Right, so we're gonna clean the entire thing. And then I'm gonna say, within the render, you have to first fill all of the rectangles and then draw the text. Or maybe, um, you know what? It doesn't really matter because we can implement fill rect uh, and we can say that every time you fill the rect, you set the shader to the color, right? I think that makes the most sense. Uh, that makes the most sense. So I think I'm going to actually do that. Do, where do we have fill rect? Oh, by the way, fill rect is locating within the game logic. So we have to definitely move uh, this entire thing to jibreak.jai. Mm -mm. uh, mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. So I'd subscribe if I could, but unfortunately, because of sanctions, I can't. I'm from Iran. Hey, I'm from Russia. I can't receive your money for because of sanctions. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. <laughs> so Iranian and Russian met on the internet. One cannot send money because of sanctions. Another one cannot receive money because of sanctions. 
Very funny, very ironic. So yeah. Um, so Artemis say thank you so much for three gifted subs, tier one subs. But maybe eventually I will receive them. Who knows? I don't know. But yeah, cheers. Um. <clears throat> Okay, uh, it is what it is, and it isn't what it isn't. Um, okay, uh, let's try to recompile it again. I moved some of the stuff to the to the logic, and let's see. Okay, fill rectangle and declared identifier fill rectangle. Even though that's really sus, that is really sus because didn't I move it there? Yeah, here is the fill rectangle, so it should be visible there. Uh, but it is not. Mm -mm. Is that because I'm... Okay. Uh, game Jai. So, okay, this is a Jai Wasm. Uh, first the Jai. First the Jai. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we're not compiling the simp platform thingy. So you know what I think? Uh, I think we should actually rename this file to something like uh, simp platform, right? So I think this is what it should be called. Uh, and let me quickly re um, query replace, query replace jai break jai, and it's gonna be called simp platform uh, jai. There we go sim platform so and we need to create another thing we're going to create wasm platform right wasm platform uh, and in here we're going to have an entry point and also implementation for the fill rect right and let me open sim platform uh -huh, uh -huh. so this is going to be the signature right so this is going to be the signature uh, right e uh-huh, so do I need to do anything else? I don't think so. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, so fill rect, it still says in declared identifier. This is because even though I created the file, I didn't say uh, to actually compile it. Right, so we need to do add build, uh, build file, and then we're going to say wasm platform. Uh, platform giant w there we go mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. okay so the only thing it complains about right now is preparing the text right so prepare the text actually consists of uh, like working with the text in simp um, consists of two functions it consists of prepare the text which sort of like I suppose renders the texture and gives you the width of that texture and then drawing the prepared text. So I don't really know how to abstract away these two calls. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just like literally take these two calls and make them part of the API, right? And, they, and in the browser, I'm going to just implement them. Uh, right, in the browser, I'm going to just implement them. Uh, so wasm platform, right? So this is the wasm platform. So this is going to be prepare text. Uh -huh. So I suppose font. Font is rather interesting, right? So I think it's going to be part of the platform to take care of the font, I think. Right. So prepare the text. It should return an integer as the width. And this one is going to be the text. So this is going to be the string. And this is going to return anything. Um, so what's interesting is that none of the functions are going to be implementing implemented at all. They're needed to make the the code compile properly, I suppose. Right. So we just need to make it compile properly. Or maybe they will be used. Yeah. They will be used at some point. We'll see. We'll see. So here we do not accept the font. As far as I know, this one is X. This one is y and this one is scholar and i suppose it is going to be vector 4 
Right, so this is a vector 4. Here we... I don't really know what we, do we accept. Do we accept floor or do we accept integer? You know what? I need to actually search for, for this entire function in Jai modules. Right, so let me find that. Uh, right, so let me see. There we go. Mm. Chamion, thank you so much for the subscriptions. Thank you everyone who subscribed. Uh, and thank you everyone for watching who cannot subscribe. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so this is the stuff. Oh, it even has effects. That's actually pretty cool. Look at that. I didn't even know what is a font effect, but it would be really interesting to explore that uh, at some point. Okay, so this is the draw text. Uh, this one is not going to be available. Uh, let's say that we're not going to uh, accept any effects and the color is going to be mandatory, uh, at least for now. Right, so this is going to be vector for, and I'm going to remove this entire thing. So uh, this is draw prepare text, prepare text. Uh, let me find where it is located. It is not located here for some reason. That's really interesting. So if I try to find prepare text colon colon where is it located it's located here and let's try to put that in here so did i guess it correctly wait a second does jai have a name to return per really holy shit so can i even say something like can i even assign that width uh to something then or something that's would be kind of cool uh, Chimion says, thank you for the, and the amazing content. I learned so much. Thank you. I also learned a lot. So not everybody knows that, but, but by streaming, I also learn. Whatever you learn on my streams, I learn as well, right? So I learn and share simultaneously. People quite often ask me, Zozin, where did you learn so much stuff? Well, the answer is in front of your eyes. Um, Every time I do something on the stream or in a flying stream or stuff like that, I actually learn as well. Right, so I learned a lot of this stuff right on the stream. Um, okay. So that's pretty cool. So maybe you can do that. Uh, I don't, don't want to waste too much time on that. Uh, okay, so here we're not going to do any of that stuff. All right, so now I want to try to compile this thing. Right, so let's try to compile this into I think. Uh, prepare the text. Okay, so now we have to do something like this. Right. So we don't accept the font. Okay, so what does it complain about? It's complaining about window width and window height, and this is one of the things that I didn't put into the parameters, unfortunately. Right. Okay. Why didn't I put them into the parameters? That's a good question. Because if I hot reload, this is one of the things that requires additional action to actually take effect. But maybe it doesn't really matter for now. So I'm going to actually move them uh, into, the, into the config. So params.conf, uh, params.conf, I'm going to move them in here. So this is going to be float. Uh -huh, this is going to be float. This one is equal. Well, not really float, it has to be an integer, right, so, and I'm going to align everything by a column, there we go, this is what we have in here, okay, so I also want to move angle factor, angle factor, I think it's the change of the reflection depending on whether the bar is moving or not, because you can actually change the angle of the ball uh, with the bar, right and the change is this factor essentially if i remember correctly right so that's what it is uh, okay that's what it is so we need that stuff uh i don't think this one is that important so i'm gonna just keep it in here uh all right so this should be fine and let's try to recompile this into i think okay uh float xx okay nx is float uh -huh. so i'm gonna actually make it xx this one is another xx uh-huh uh -huh. so what do we have in here mismatched levels of indirection type match target given oh why did it work before then wait 
Is that a bug? Mm, I mean... It feels like a bug. How did it work before then? What, what has changed? This is really weird. Right, why did it work before then? <laughs> Or maybe I enable some sort of a... Oh, I know what, what the hell has happened. Uh, out of the reference. Okay, so that is very interesting. Uh, let me find that. So if I... Mm -hmm. And then... Out of the reference. Damn, that's that that's a very interesting feature. Out of the reference. So recently we implemented like out of the reference for structures in C. Do you guys remember uh, the stream where I hacked uh, hacked the C compiler, right? Where like I basically made the arrow obsolete. You know what I mean? So sorting daily. Uh, so let's actually find that, find that stream. So yeah, I, I recently published that thing. So hacking C compiler. And I implemented out of the reference for accessing the fields of the structure. Right, out of the reference for C compiler, right? So this is where I did that. But this is the next level. This is the out of the reference for any type. So essentially, if the function if the function accepts the value, right? So if the function accepts the value, but you're trying to put a reference to that value, it will out dereference that. This is actually a very interesting feature. Wait a goddamn second. This is so cool. Is it? I never thought about that. Right. So the, this is another annoying, like, I just realized that this is a very similar level of annoyance, right? Where you have a piece of code and you move that piece of code to a different context where the, the structure is not a pointer anymore, but a value. And you have to now replace dots with arrow. This is a similar situation. You change the type of the parameter of one function and now you, go, you have to go through all of the calls and you have to switch um switch all of the reference and dereference and stuff like that this is a kind of a similar situation if you think about that this is very fucking similar and john actually noticed that holy sh this is i never thought about that. that that's that's a similar situation actually huh okay thank you very much like i'll keep that in mind okay let's continue <laughs> Uh, all right, so clamp. As far as I know, clamp located in basic, right? So I'm, I think I'm starting to actually remember where certain stuff is located and stuff like that. Okay, dynamic font. Uh, I suppose dynamic font has to be located within the platform. So let me move that into, into the simp platform. And this is going to be uh, in here. Uh, okay, so what else do we have in here? So prepare text. Uh, it should not accept anything. I think that should be it. Uh -huh. So this is another one. Let's remove the font. Uh, draw prepare text. I think we did it. We're actually compiling the logical... So it's probably generated shadow of... Uh, okay, okay. So it, it keeps generating... All right, so it generated 82 megabytes of intermediate representation. So, but this is like literally only the logic of the game. Uh, we separated that logic of the game from the simp uh, platform, right? So now we have, to, we have to try to compile it to WebAssembly. So let's actually try to go and compile it to WebAssembly. That's pretty cool. So it created an executable for Wasm, uh, right? So this is the executable, but, but it does nothing. Uh, right, it literally does nothing because the Watton platform doesn't do anything. Oh, here is an interesting thing. Here's an interesting thing that I didn't discuss. And this one is super important. This one is super important. Uh, in the proof of the concept, right, in the proof of the concept, if we take a look at the proof of the concept, 
we can call the Jai functions, right? We can call the Jai functions, but the Jai code cannot call JavaScript functions. Well, it's not necessarily true. It can call this function. It tries to call these functions, but these functions are uh, sort of like libc uh, POSIX thread functions, right? How can we have our own custom functions like in here, for instance, I want to have things like fill rect, right? I want to have like external function that Jaya code calls, but it's actually external function that is going to be implemented in JavaScript. How can you do something like that? So we have only one direction of interacting with Jaya code. We can call Jaya code, but Jaya code cannot call to us. And this is very important to actually uh, complete this uh, feedback loop. Right, where the platform calls to the game and game calls back every time you need to uh, fill a rectangle. Right, otherwise it's not going to work. See what I mean? So to learn how to do that, we need to take a look at these functions. Where those functions are defined, you know what I mean? So how are they defined? They're probably defined as some sort of like a foreign functions. So let me see. Uh, maybe I want to take a look at this one. Okay. So I'm going to go into OPT. Uh, I already know how to do that because I, I, like, uh, I tested that mechanism off screen, but I want to demonstrate you how it's, how it's done and how I discovered it. Right. So, uh, all right. So let me try to find that. I wonder if we'll be able to find that. We should be able to find that. I'm pretty sure. So we didn't find that. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, let's try to find maybe malloc. Uh, we'll be able to find malloc. All right. Uh, so, but this is actually very similar. A lot of these functions, a lot of these functions that become available for WebAssembly, they're marked as foreign functions, right? They're marked as foreign function, but they also have the library. They also have the library associated with them, right? And uh, this is usually a uh, like a compile time variable that stores something that is foreign library. Right, so this entire thing sort of loads a foreign library and uh, creates an object of the foreign library that you can then pass to, uh, to the directive foreign and mark a certain function as the function that comes from that specific library. Um, oh, damn, Jai has uh, also exposed that. You won't believe how much different shit it has exposed. It's unbefucking livable. Curl, direct X. So, so free type, uh, I'm GUI, uh, like STB, shit ton of STB libraries. This is a lot. This is like a gold mine. Like any useful library under the sun, it has a binding for that and it comes with the distribution. This shit is awesome. Like I'm telling you, like it has everything. So, <laughs> and it's actually relatively easy to write your own binding uh, for like anything. Um, so, and it just like, it comes with the distribution, like it's just, it's just like Python, you know, uh, it has shit ton of different libraries. Um, X11, for instance, Vulkan, you can do Vulkan threads and some other stuff, STB, STB, sprintf. Ooh, Objective-C, it probably needs Objective-C for the, um, for the metal, I'm pretty sure, right. So, right, so uh, these language is designed for making games and game engines like need a lot of different stuff, need a lot of multimedia stuff. So that's probably why. Okay. Uh, you can do a lot with, the, with this language already. And it's not even finished yet, by the way. It's not even finished. Uh, <clears throat> so, um, all right. So essentially, if you have this function in a separate external library, you can trick Jai compiler into generating the code that will call to the external function. You know what I mean? So let's actually try to do something like that. So let's create a, a C file, right? And within the C file, we're gonna create a function uh, that, let's say, accepts two integers, right? A and B, uh, right? But on top of summing them up, let's actually add, I don't know, 1 million 
just to distinguish them from the, the regular sum up, right? So we're going to have something like this. Uh, right now, I'm going to try to compile it into like a module. I wonder if it can load like all files, right? Can it load all files? That's actually a good question. Um, so in the main dot j, uh, we're going to say, so how did I call that? I called it bar. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to have foo, and this is going to be foreign uh, library, and here we're going to have foo o. Uh, right, so then I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to have a function bar that uh, accepts an integer, two integers, and returns another integer, but in fact, it's a foreign function, it's a foreign function from foo. Right. So I'm going to try to compile this entire thing and see if it's going to work. Uh, so this is going to be main. I actually have to do first. Uh, there we go. So what does it say? Uh, dynamic. So it cannot really work with all files. It needs a dynamic library. Okay, if I remember correctly, so to create a dynamic library, right, so we have to do something like lib foo so, you just have to do shared. Right. Did it create share? Okay, so it did in fact create share. Um, right, so if I do lib so, will that work? Just a second. Uh -huh. So it says dot so dot so. Okay, so you don't have to provide dot so. And it worked. So this is, by the way, how easy to interact with the C code in Jai, right? So you just create a, a dynamic library and then you can just load that thing from the dynamic library and just like call to it, by the way. So, um, uh, so now let's try to turn this, let's try to turn this into uh, WebAssembly. Let's try to turn this into WebAssembly and it turned it into WebAssembly. And here's an interesting thing. Uh, if we take a look, can we find uh, the bar function in there? We can't, something something's really weird. So bar, it doesn't even import that. Uh, I wonder why. So let me take a look. Let me take a look. So I'm gonna start the server and let's see if the server is going to complain okay so load js it complains about uh, 18 let's remove that and sum is not a function um okay this is a little bit annoying right so i want to write a function that finds a name by prefix it will accept the exports and the prefix so in here we're going to do the following thing uh, for names in export right so as far as i know exports is the is the map right for names in export uh if name starts with a specific prefix we're going to straight up return uh, exports exports name otherwise we're going to return null right so in here i'm going to do the following thing sum is equal to find name by prefix we're going to accept the exports and the prefix is going to be sum and then we don't have to do that stuff anymore because this is really goddamn annoying this is really goddamn annoying okay so what do we have sum is not a function that's very cool uh-huh so it didn't create anything did i miss anything uh, let me do console log sum and i'm gonna just refresh so it actually returned a null because this is what it's supposed to be and uh, there we go so it's a function and it worked and it really wasn't i, th I feel like it actually got removed by that code elimination that's what it feels like um so let's actually try to call to this function, right? Let's try to call to this function. Uh, so I'm going to do that. Uh, bar uh, signature mismatch int. Okay, so let's put it this way. It doesn't really matter. 
Um, okay, so now I'm gonna try to create the WebAssembly and WebAssembly was successfully created and function import requires callable bar. It tries to call to bar. Look at that. It actually tries to call to bar and if I take a look at the, the imports, right, here it is. So this is how you sort of um, mark as function as imported. You create a dummy as O library, tricking compiler into thinking that you're going to be loading uh, C functions, and then in JavaScript, you substitute them with JavaScript implementations. Right, again, WebAssembly is not officially supported by Jai, but the fact that you still can do that is freaking amazing. Uh, right, so let's actually... <laughs> uh, so I, I'm pretty sure you can have even do something like that. You don't even have to implement anything for that function. The only thing that is required for Jai is the fact that the name is there. So the only thing that Jai wants is the name in SO. Right, I can even try to do something like this. All right, and then try to compile Jai again. It will compile, right, because the name is there. And then I can turn it into a WebAssembly module and it will still work. So the signature, specific signature of bar doesn't even matter. The only thing that matters is the name in SO file, right? As long as you have that name there, you can trick the compiler into importing that function and then you can substitute the import in JavaScript. So, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's actually put bar in there and see what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna put it in here and uh, I suppose I should have actually put comma in here. And there you go. So cannot convert 34 to big integer. Cannot convert. Why were you trying to do that? Oh, because it expects big integers in here. Okay, so can we do something like that? Uh, all right, look at that. 34, 35. So uh, now we can actually accept those numbers in here, right? And we can return, uh, we can return the sum of them plus the million, just to distinguish them. And we can say something in here. Uh, so we can say, yep, J just called to JavaScript. It's a J script now. Move. Okay, so Jai script. Uh, pretty cool. So that's how we can do that. Uh, so this is how we sort of can hijack the the call uh, from Jai to. Uh, to external library, right, and then substitute it with something else. And did it actually return anything? I think, uh, I think there were some problems. I, I don't freaking know. So this is because they're big integers. So I should have actually done something like this. Yeah, there we go. So this is the one million and sixty nine. So essentially, what we did, we take, a th we took thirty four and thirty five, we send them to Jai code. The Jai code then called bar, which went back to JavaScript, printed that message, summed them up and added 1 million and returned that value. Then Jai code took that 1 million 69 and returned it back to, into the JavaScript and we returned it and printed it in here. And that's why we have this message and then this value. So this is how it traveled, right? So from JavaScript, we called to Jai and Jai called back to JavaScript and then we went back. All right, so that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, now, let me let me see. So now I want to actually apply that to um, to the game. All right. So this is going to be dry break. Okay. Uh, let me check if anyone subscribed. Let me check if anyone gave me any money. Uh, so. I think Chimion, but I already acknowledged that. Okay, so that's good. Let's continue. Uh, let me let me see. Hmm. So what we're gonna do in here, right? So the most important thing uh, is fill rect. The problem with fill rect is that it accepts two structures, as you can see. 
it accepts two structures. Uh, I have no idea how Jaya passes the structures, like what's the call convention, how the call convention works. Because of that, I'm thinking I'm gonna actually create a separate fill rect wasm function, which is going to accept all of this thing. Um, mm, uh, which it will basically take all of the structures, right? And it will spread them and pass them here. So we're going to accept them by, um, by native values, by, by atomic values. Right. So uh, now let me see how we can do that. I don't remember if the, uh, uh, if the rectangle is actually, uh, if the rectangle is actually float, because I know the vector 4 is float 32, right? So they all are float 32. Uh, let me see if the rectangle is as well, right? So they're also float 32. Okay, so here we're going to do something like x, float 32, float 32, then uh, float 32. Okay, so it's something like that, float, float 32. And in here, we're going to do R, float 32, G, float 32, B, float 32, and A, float 32. Uh -huh. Okay. So, and now, how are we going to do all of that? So, this is supposed to be a foreign function, right? So, this is supposed to be a foreign function. Um, let's call it wasm stub, right? So this is going to be basically wasm stub. Uh, wasm stub um, foreign library, foreign library leap wasm stub. And that should be it, I suppose. That should be it. And here we're going to do fill erect wasm, uh, erect x uh, rect y rect w rect h color uh, x color y uh, this is not what I want color z color w there we go uh, okay so maybe for now by the way I'm going to Oh yeah, so in case of a text, we just like sync the text into nothing, right? We just like literally sync the text into nothing. Um, so I think I'm going to focus on the, on the text a little bit later, right? I'm going to focus on the text a little bit later. So let me try to compile the entire thing. So foreign library, we don't have such library yet, right? So let's actually create something like wasm, wasm stub. So this is going to be C. And in here, uh, we're going to just have a single thing in here, like fill rect wasm. But we don't even have to implement that. We don't even have to match the signature yet again. Uh, right. So let me see. So I have to do something like CC. Leap wasm stub as so. Uh, wasm stub C. And uh, so it also wants to... I have to say that it's shared. There we go, there we go. So we've got that. And if I try to run this thing, so is it gonna work? Is it gonna work now, yo? So it is doing some stuff, I suppose. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. All right, so I think it worked. Um, what we need to do, what we need to do, I think we need to make a small break because I need to refill my water. Maybe I want to even make a cup of tea. You know what, chat? I want to make a cup of tea. And after the break, we're going to try to take that LLVM file of the logic of the game. So the entire logic of the game is located in here. And we're going to try to turn it into a WASM file. Luckily, we already have all of the necessary scripts. We just have to apply the scripts. And, uh, and just like turn it into the thing and then implement all of the necessary API things. You know what I mean? All right, let's make a small break and... All right, so let's continue the uh, development. So we already have uh, intermediate representation and we need to try to compile that intermediate representation to um, WebAssembly. So I'm going to take my build wasm script in the proof of concept, right? So, 
and I'm gonna literally copy paste it there. Uh, so, but the problem here is that it depends on very specific file name, uh, right, which might not be present. Oh, uh, okay, so it, it's actually present there. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. So it is hard coded. Uh, I'm gonna keep it hard coded, uh, right? And I'm gonna try to build uh, Wasm now. Okay, so it contains shit ton of um, assembly. So I suppose this is because we include a lot of additional code that we didn't include in the proof of concept, right? So that means we'll have to go to more places to get rid of the wasm. So we'll need to bring that wasm detector into, into this build system. Uh, build wasm, let me find that thing. So this is a Jai wasm. Um, so how we do that, we essentially first intercept uh, intercept the compilation messages, then we put a bunch of files for the compilation, then we organize the event loop and we receive the compilation messages. So here are the compilation messages. And after finishing handling all of them, we finish the interception of the compiler. So this is one of the cool features of Jai is that you can sort of embed into an event loop of the compiler. Right, so you can listen for different events within the compiler and one of the most interesting events is type checked. That uh, event, that message is sent every time a particular piece of code is type checked. So uh, then you can take that piece of code and explore it. For instance, here we're looking for uh, ASM blocks. And as soon as we find an ASM block, we report it. So you can go there and do something with that block. Right. So uh, that way we can find everything that sort of stays in the way of translating intermediate presentation into WebAssembly because assembly blocks are not translatable. You have to do something with them. You have to remove them. If they're not removable, you have to re-implement them in Jai or something like that. So there is usually a reason to use assembly things, uh, for instance, for um, compare and swap. You want compare and swap to be atomic, so that's why you want to use assembly. So John just put a, a, like a couple of hacks in there. So, uh, but in any case, they're not translatable web assembly. We, we have to find them and do something with them, right? So that's one of the problems that we have to deal with, uh, right? So that's a lot of assembly code. Not that much, actually. So we had three uh, assembly box now we have uh, six of them okay so three more all right so here we already uh, got rid of them uh, this one this one is new so what is that oh it's a print it's a print it's a print it's a print I suppose I think like print is coming from well we can always do something like use CMD all right so we can say don't use CMD sure um, So I'm just looking at this comment. Maybe it has something to do with UCMD, but I don't think it has anything to do with that. Uh, all right. So let me see. Mm. So print uh, already set use CMD. I think this one also depends on UCMD. Um, random. Oh shit. Okay. Yo. God damn, this entire random is implemented in assembly, so <laughs> this one is kind of difficult to get rid of, not gonna lie. Um, so what I'm thinking is that maybe we can use random from JavaScript, right? You know what I mean? Monka Giga, yeah, that's, that's a lot. It's actually kind of cool that you can just like stray the program in assembly. Uh, in this language, right? It's just like, yeah, and you, you even have the same comments. Uh, that's so cool. It's just like assembly that is part of the language. So cool. Um, I don't really know what all of that means, but yeah. Cool. Yeah, it is quite cool. So as far as I know, like in the future, it is planned for these assembly blocks to be also generatable, right? So essentially in the meta program, you'd be able to like explore this assembly code and do something with that. Um, GPR just means a register. Oh, oh, so it's not just assembly, it's a abstract assembly. Instead of like saying, okay, move to register AX, you can say move to register GPR and we're going to assign GPR somewhere in a different place. 
So it's it's slightly higher level than assembly. That's actually very cool. Holy shit, this is so awesome. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so the only thing we need in here, right, in our game specifically, right, when we do random, so I can even disable random just to see like what exactly we need there. Uh, right, we only need random get zero to one, which is quite easy to implement in JavaScript because as far as I know, in JavaScript, math random is literally that. Math random is literally a thing that gives you a random value from zero to one. So can I just can I just um, take that and put that into the wasm stub? Right. So this is going to be wasm stub, and uh, let me do cc. So this is part of the wasm stub and the wasm platform. In the wasm wasm platform, we're going to have something like this. Uh, but the question is random uh, random j so it just returns float uh, it just returns float so we can say float but it's something that comes from a foreign thing wasn't stub okay that is pretty cool uh, Lol Dizer, thank you so much for tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so uh, let me try to compile this. Into, I think. Um, oh shit! We also have get within the range. Damn! Damn! Okay. Yikes! Oh, we can try to do some this the same thing. Sure. <laughs> Um, so, and the range, actually, we just have two floats in there, right? Uh, was in platform. And this one is going to accept float 32, float 32. There we go. Uh, so did I recompile this in there, I think? Okay, that's fine. Let me see. So we only have a print problem, right? So, but I think I actually fixed that print problem because I said don't use simd, right? Uh, all right, so this entire thing compiled. And now can I try to turn this entire thing into WebAssembly? Wait, did it just work? <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Wait. Um, I guess it worked. Do, do you hear that? Oh, it's a fireworks. Okay, so... <laughs> right, it looks like it's a fireworks. Everything fine. What, what what the fuck are they celebrating? Jesus fucking Christ. Like, there is no reason to celebrate right now. That's for sure. No, this is another show. That's for sure. It's a fireworks. So, you know, after the, after the firework, after the, like, shot sound, there is also crackling. So, there was this kind of, like, fireworkish crackling uh, that the microphone probably didn't pick up. Uh, so it's, it's a firebox for sure. Um, okay, so we have literally everything in here, just like a random get zero to one. Uh, feel wrecked wasn't, by the way. Uh, Ukraine bombs <laughs> those. So Ukrainian army already reached Novosibirsk, right? So because uh, Novosibirsk is like raft uh, right after the Belgrade. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. So, uh, okay, let's actually try to to load this entire thing. Um, let's try to load this entire thing. Uh, I'm going to 
uh, go to the proof of concept and I'm gonna take this load.js. So I'm gonna actually copy paste both of the files like index.html and load.js, right? So a sync, I'm gonna remove that and I'm gonna start this entire thing from here. Uh, right, so, all right. And let's see how this entire thing is going to fail. Uh, okay. Random get zero to one. So it already requests us to, to implement all of that. So this is gonna be load.js. And, um, yep. How are we gonna be implementing all of this? I suppose this is gonna be just like literally math random, right? So just call to this thing directly. Uh, so get within the range, we can implement that as well. Uh, math, I, I'm not really sure, right? Range, 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 range. So do we have, uh, can I just do something like this? I think I can. <laughs> I really like how every time I change the character, uh, it changed some. Ah, well, I mean, it, it. You can actually put anything in there, right? So, this is the beauty of JavaScript, as far as I know. You, you can provide any amount of parameters as you want. Uh, the rest of them are going to be ignored or something like that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a very good language, by the way. <clears throat> anyway, uh, so is there something like range? Because I can always do something like lerp, right? So I can do from zero five to one five, and then just like random. And wait, lerp is not a part of the JavaScript either, right? JavaScript lerp, really? I guess I have to implement everything myself, sure. Uh, we can implement everything. That's fine. Uh, so this is going to be math random. I'm going to multiply that b minus a, and then I'm going to uh, add this one again. So it's not that hard. Um, okay, maybe I can do something like this. Okay. All right. Do we need anything else? Do we need anything else? Let's see. Let's see. I have to implement everything myself. Ah, God damn JavaScript. God damn, bro. Um. You know, so this one, feel erect wasm, feel erect wasm, uh, fabs, okay, uh, let's actually do fabs. Well, I think I'm pretty sure I can just use the JavaScript implementation, right? So it's abs minus 69, okay, so that works. Uh, I can just do math abs, right, so maths. Uh, ABS and uh, what else? Povf. Do we have Povf? Uh -huh. Two to the power of ten. Yeah, we do have that. That's cool. Uh, Povf. Pov. Uh, anything else? Okay, that's cool. Sum is not a function. Well, I mean, we don't really have any of that. Cool. So, you know what we need to do? We need to find a very important function. So, init state. Init state. We need to call this function first. Uh, I'm gonna try to find init state, and this thing starts with init state. Uh, and, okay, that's cool. I'm gonna also try to do console log init state and see if we do have a, okay, so this is a native function, so I can try to call this function in its state, uh, all right? Function signature mismatch. Oh shit, real lock, array, ooh, array add. Fuck, you know what it is? This is because I'm using dynamic arrays. This is literally because of that. Uh, I was actually contemplating whether to use dynamic arrays or not, because they're using like malloc and dynamic memory allocation and stuff like that. And it's just like makes it more complicated. Maybe I should not do that chat. Maybe I should not do that. You know what I, what I think? You know what I think chat? I think I need to switch back to static arrays. You see, I have targets in here. So what I have to do instead, I have to take the 
uh, where is that? Uh, pro porem porems conf target rows, right? So I'm going to do target rows multiplied by target columns. There we go. And this is what we're going to have in here. And now I don't have to do that. And here, instead of adding, I'm going to be doing the following thing. I'm going to take the row multiplied by target columns plus the current column, and I'm going to just assign the target. So that should effectively get rid of the dynamic memory allocation because we just pre-allocate this entire thing. And we don't have to deal with this realloc. Like, I just don't want to deal with that. Uh, all right. Okay, let me try to recompile everything. As I'm detected, as I'm detected, as I'm detected, as I'm detected. And after it's done building everything, it's taking some time. Uh, we're going to try to generate the wasm shrite. Worked. OK. I guess it worked. Did it, did it, did it work, actually? OK. So if I do console log begin, It, I, I guess it worked, it just called init state and it didn't fail, it didn't throw any exception, it just silently executed that thing. Okay, next question. What if we take a function called render? Right. Render does not accept any arguments, that's the cool thing about it. So here is the render function. What if what will happen if we try to call the render function? If we take a look at the game logic in here, right? So what the render function does, it just iterates through the, its entire state. It iterates through its entire state and calls a bunch of fill rect. And as we already know, fill rect calls to external function, right? So it should call uh, to this fill rect wasm a bunch of times. Right. As soon as I call render, it should start calling into fill rect. So basically go back. So as you can see, platform called render and the render calls back into the platform through fill rect. You see what I mean? Right. So this is basically what's happening in here. Uh, and let's see if, if that will happen. So fill rect is not implemented yet. So it should basically bring a bunch of like not implemented fill rect and a bunch of uh, rectangles. Right. Let's see. It, it actually worked. The fuck? So here are all of the rectangles of the game. So also it asserted. Uh, assert get current print to... Oh, okay. It, it tried to print something. But, but it managed to do that. Look at that shit. Holy fuck. This is so cool. So the only thing we need to do now is to just like hook up this fill rect into the canvas and it will render itself. The game will render itself. There's something sus in here, don't you think? There's something sus, not gonna lie. Uh, let me, let me see. So where is the game? Game Jai, right? So this is a game Jai. Uh, so wasn't platform. I think this is where I have to go. So the first four numbers are the rectangle. The next four numbers is the color. So all of them are black. All of them are black. The question is why? Okay, so... So this one, 0, 20, 20, I suppose this is a ball, right? So the initial state of the ball is at here for the first, yeah, for the first frame, it's going to be like around there. Uh, but then the color is there. So if I go to the game, um, render, so particles, we rendered the particles, but we don't have any particles. That's why they're not rendered. And then we uh, render the ball itself. So here is the ball. If I try to maybe explicitly, so we're taking this thing from uh, from here. It's it's initialized with one one one, 
And this is really weird. Right. This is really weird. Okay, let's try to uh, maybe build everything from scratch. You know what? I'm gonna actually uh, like link together these two things. So you're gonna build this thing and then generate wasm out of that. <laughs> okay. So let me see what's gonna happen. Huh. Ha <laughs> ha. So if we take a look at how we pass fuel wrecked, so there's some bugs in here, right? Uh, what if I directly replace this kind of stuff? So if I say, okay, so I'm gonna just like do it directly. And the color in here, so maybe this is something wrong with the floats. Uh -huh. Maybe this is something, okay, so this is not wrecked. Um, I can do something like this, proj wrecked, proj x, proj y. Okay, let's see. Uh, does Jai says the as detected of it's it's kind of interesting. It says asm detected even if it doesn't compile that, which means that it tries to compile both of the branches of compile time if. Right, it compiles them and type checks them, but then it includes one that that matches the condition or something like that. So it's kind of interesting. Right, so if it has this kind of condition, right? So this is a compile time if, right? Apparently, Jai compiles always both of the branches. And then it executes this condition at compile time and only includes the one according to that condition. So it prints as undetected even if it's not included, right? So because we excluded why the compile time if. So I, this is my hypothesis why it prints that. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. So did it work? Okay, what do we have in here? Um, but if I put that thing directly, really? Damn, <laughs> the fuck? Um, so it probably has something to do with, uh, with structure literals. It could be some sort of a bug with structure literals. So, mm. <sighs> sub sermon. Uh, Maybe it has, it's so weird. Mm -mm. Let me take a look at the signature of maybe fill wrecked wasm or something. Uh, uh, t -t 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 -t. So, hmm. But what if I, what if I put something like this? Uh, Caller, uh, I'm going to say it's a vector. Because for the rectangle, it works. I can pass rectangle fine. There's something wrong with the vector specifically. And it's really, really strange. Um, okay, so. <gasps> Wait a minute. Joy modules math where is the vector i need to find the vector vector four uh-huh oof. oof 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 this is some sort of like a layout magic i'm not mm. i don't even know how this shit works 
Right, so it might be actually relying on some sort of like a runtime code and stuff like that. So, yeah. But as far as I know, you can use like a dash 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 to say that just allocate this structure and don't call any of this stuff. It's a four floats in size, then the rest overlay that. Uh, I suppose, I don't know, so maybe. Um, yeah, but this kind of does not allow us to properly work. Let me let me try to recompile this, I think, one more time. Uh. Okay, we compiled. Uh -huh. All right, so it's zero, zero, zero. And I wonder, what if I just like, okay, don't do that. And I'm gonna directly assign those values uh, and see what's gonna happen. okay yep so that's very funny so essentially if you initialize this thing without using the structure literals it works that's kind of interesting uh, I have a feeling that maybe structure literals just like don't really understand when you have this kind of stuff in here especially when it gets translated to WebAssembly maybe with x 64 it's fine but it's so weird. Uh, as far as I know, those things, you can also specify explicitly the fields to initialize. Right, can I do something like that? Okay. Uh, the iteration time is actually kind of... All right, so it's zero, zero, zero. That's fine. And now can I say something like X? Is that how we do that? I don't remember. If you use the struct initializer, it puts the data in R data or something like that. I don't even know what is R data, but I do agree that some sort of a magic is going on there. Uh, okay, so uh -huh. you know what I'm thinking? Oh, what if I do something like make vector for? I wonder if it will work as well. Mm -hmm. Read only section of object files that the linker puts together. Uh, ooh, obviously linker doesn't apply here. Yeah, oh, I see. Okay, right, so whatever... Maybe our data is really like not available. Yeah. So that's probably the case. That's literally the case, I suppose. Huh. Oh, I think it worked. So I can I can construct things why I make uh, why I make vector. I wonder, like, so the most important thing for me right now is the targets, right? So I want the targets to have their respective colors, right? So because of that. Uh, can I do make vector four? All right. And will that produce the colors? Hopefully that will. Well, I mean, this has to be like a pointer. Mm, I'll definitely have to explore that.
<clears throat> sorry. Okay. All right, so that worked. So th th that's the most important thing for me right now, is just like the targets to have their uh, corresponding values. Right, because now what I can do, I can create a co canvas and make them render themselves in that canvas and have some sort of stuff. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and do that. Uh, Index.html and let's do canvas ID. So this is going to be app and this is going to be canvas, right? Uh, load JS and let me do the following thing. So this is going to be um, const app document get element by ID. So this is going to be app. Did we find that element? Console log app. Right, there we go. Uh, by the way, I should probably not call a render for now because it will just generate too much stuff. Okay, so here is the app. And, you know, I think I need to set the width uh, and then height, something like this. So if I take a look, so this is the size of the canvas, right? So that's fine. And the next thing I need to do, I need to take the context, get context 2D. And let's take a look, CTX. All right, so we've got the context. I'm going to keep it in there. So also maybe I'm going to make it let, just in case you want to substitute it. Uh, fill rect, right. So here, what do we have? X, Y, W, H, R, G, B, A. Uh -huh. Now, what I need to do, I need to turn these colors into the, uh, into the HTML colors, right? So essentially, I need to do the following thing. I need to take R and multiply it by 255. Then uh, I need to floor it, right? I'm flooring it. After that, I need to turn it into a string, but I don't remember how to do that. So imagine I have like half. I multiply it to uh, 155 and then I do math floor. All right. So then I can do two string. That will convert it to a string. Um, but I actually want to convert it to a hexadecimal. As far as I know, you can just put yeah, you can put like this thing in here and it will turn it in, into hexadecimal. But what's funny is that what if we have too small of a value, right? So something like this, you'll need to pad it with zeros. So as far as I know, you can do pad start, right? And you can say pad it to the size of two, but by default it uses uh, space. So you have to say zero. That's how we do that, right? So that's basically the, the way and then whatever value you have in there right so it's going to be like properly uh properly put uh, maybe even something like that 25 25 so that, that converts more or less properly uh okay so that's the function that we do care about uh -huh. so this one becomes r and uh, this one g uh, B and then A and the color right so we can do CTX fill style is going to be equal this plus R plus G plus B plus A there we go so that's how we're going to be doing all that uh, so then I'm going to do CTX fill rect X uh, Y W H okay so let me let me try to, to run this entire thing. Um, okay, so I need to call the render. And now every call to render... <laughs> Holy shit. This is so cool. Holy fuck. We just rendered a single frame from the game. <laughs> Well, almost. I mean, um, we, we need to clean the um, the canvas, right? <laughs> we need to clean the canvas, so I have to do something like CTX fill style, um, and then CTX fill rect, and then the size of the entire thing. So, 
holy shit what the fuck yeah so and it's done completely inside of the browser so the original game you can take a look at the original game here right so if you're interested um so this is how the original game looks like right so in three the ninja and we just rendered a single frame in the browser holy shit okay so uh i want to do the following thing i suppose i want to render the the bar i want to render the bar so i'm gonna go and do params conf and i need to find the bar caller uh so caller so this is the text uh here's the bar caller so this is the bar caller oof i will need to convert that to to something to something first again try render so this is what we do um feel a rec wrecked bar caller all right so bar caller is make vector this uh -huh. so that means this is one then uh this one divided by uh -huh. 19 19 1 i think that's what we have in here all right so i'm gonna just do that manually mm-hmm nice good job thank you that's an old meme holy shit that's why you have a mob right away with your computers because you remember that old ass memes <sighs> that's why you're mob <clears throat> a real og of the channel okay so we have that shit cool so as far as i know the ball is attached to the bar on the first frame right it's attached to the bar on the first frame so we probably want to do the following thing uh we want to call uh, update but we have to call it with some value let's say it's going to be like 16 or something or maybe uh one over 60. right so let's give it a try and it didn't work function signature oh I think I know what's up with that. Main what? Um, render. Actually, update. I keep forgetting about this thing. So this is the delta time, and this is an integer. This is a pointer to the context. Uh, but what's interesting is that we don't really use any context. So we can quite easily just say, okay, uh, zero or maybe even cooler let's create null and in our case null is going to be just zero so we say that we apply like a null pointer as the context there is no context we don't use any context um right so if i try to do that uh it still memset it was trying to use memset why did you try to use memset that's a good question Hmm, goddamn, we'll have to implement that actually. Ah, fuck. This is a T print. I know what it is. I know what it is. T print. Because we're using temporary memory. You know what, chat? We're not doing any, <laughs> any text anyway. Right. Since we're not doing any text anyway, who cares? Let's actually don't render any text. We can think about the text a bit later. Uh... Update is not defined. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, load JS. Let's do an update. There we go. Okay, so that kind of worked. And we also print the render. We don't, we don't really have to print. Oh, did it work? Did it work? No, it didn't work. I wonder why. Hmm. What if I call it... A ah, I see. I first have to call update and then have to call the render. 
There we go. So it attached it. In. Holy shit. This is like, it, it literally looks like the game. It literally looks like the game. That's very cool. So you know what we have to do? We have to organize the event loop, right? We have to organize the event loop. So JavaScript uh, request frame something something. So we'll have to have the frame, right? So it's going to be function frame. As far as I know, it accepts the timestamp, the current timestamp. Um, so request animation frame, yeah. So what we have to do is window uh, request animation uh, animation frame, right? And this is the frame, and we have to do that like that. Uh, so to maintain the delta time, we have to keep track of the previous delta time. But initially, we don't really know the delta time. And the way I do that is if previous equal to null, right? Um, what I do is just like I, I assign the timestamp to the previous. So this has like a downside. It basically makes an if on each frame. What I came up with recently, right, I came up with the idea that I have a first frame, right, the only responsibility of which is to just set the previous, and basically it effectively skips a single frame, but then it uh, schedules the frame, and you actually assign first here, and that way you don't really have to do this check. Right, so you do a first frame, which then like remembers a single timestamp and then goes to the actual loop in here. Right, so it's kind of weird, but this is what it is. Maybe there is a way to get the uh, the timestamp directly, but I don't know it because I'm not a web developer, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so here we're gonna have a delta time, uh, which is essentially timestamp minus previous, right? And there we go, you have a DT, and then you can reassign uh, previous to that. Uh, and what we're gonna do in here, we're gonna literally call update with this delta time, and then we're gonna re-render everything. That way, we just organized the event loop. Uh, so that way, we just organized the event loop, but we won't be able to see anything. And the reason is because we can't control any of that shite, right? So, okay, and something failed miserably. I wonder what, assignment to a constant variable. I should have actually called it let. Uh, okay, so it worked. Uh, we can't control anything in here, right? Um, okay, so now uh, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna actually create add event listener. All right, so we need something like key down uh, e console log e and then key up. All right. So let me see if uh, if it's going. Okay. So here we have this kind of stuff. Uh, so do we have the actual code that I can send in here? So okay, there is a key code. Um, mm -hmm. Key down, key up, key code, key code. Okay. Okay, so we have codes in here and even spaces and stuff like that. So the only thing we need in here is to actually pass that information to um, to to the Jai module, right? So let me go to game Jai. So and let me see. So I probably want to have something like key um, pressed. Right, key pressed. And we're going to have something like key, which is uh, u32. So this is a key pressed. And then um, it's called key press. And then key release. Okay, so this one is going to be exported, so that means we'll have to have them in here. So, key press, and this one is a key uh, release. Uh, so now, we'll have to do key press, and then key release. Okay. Uh, when I press the key, it depends on what kind of key is that. So, if the key is 
for example, A. That means left is going to be true. And if it's D, right is going to be true. Oh, I think the, it uses the code of the, of the capitalized ones, right? Because it was 83 or something. Uh, let me see, 83, it capitalized, yeah, yeah, so it capitalized. Um, so then, I need to do a release one as well. So this one's going to be false. Okay. Console key presso. I'm sorry. I don't know what I'm talking about. I didn't speak Italian. Okay, so let me let me see. Is it going to work? Uh, I need to refresh properly. Uh, doesn't really work. Uh, I don't see shit. So that definitely did not work. Did it even call to them? Or maybe am I calling to something that doesn't exist? It could be the case. Load JS. Uh, key press key release. Console log key press. Uh -huh. Key release. So let's see. Okay, so we do have this stuff. Uh, can I do keep? Okay, I cannot access that, unfortunately. Uh huh. So that means we also pass them there. Oh yeah, first one is the context. I keep I keep forgetting that. I'm sorry. Uh, probably have to maybe. Oh shit. Oh, that's very funny. You know why? Because the time step is in seconds, uh, in milliseconds. I have to convert it so it basically teleports there. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Holy shit. Wait, what the fuck is this shit? Why does it just work? What the fuck? Okay. Um, so now I need to do space, right? When I do space, I need to initiate the game. All right. Um, now it's somewhere like a simp platform. Uh, how do we start the game? All right, so I think it's somewhere here. Yeah, this is how we start the game. When you press the space. Uh -huh. Right, so we're not in a space state is that. We are, of course, it's pressed, so we don't have to check that. We switch to, to play, we initiate, initiate everything, and there we go. So, okay. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so we're getting freaking close. Everyone. Holy shit. The fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? It works. I mean, there are some bugs with like uh, with the colors, but it fucking works. Holy shit! It fucking works. The game works <laughs> in the browser. What the fuck? I mean, I did that without having the source code of Jai, right? So, without any source code of Jai, with enough effort, right, and enough research, you can make a game that works in a browser. What if I had an access to the Jai source code? I wonder if I could actually implement the, um, like, the proper support for Wasm. That would be actually kind of interesting. I don't know. Oh, yeah. So that's cool. Uh, do it. I mean, I don't have an access to the to the source code, and I probably will never have an access to the source code. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure if the sanctions will tighten up, uh, John may get into trouble for providing me the source code to Jay. So, 
<laughs> so I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to give me anything. So it's just like, uh, yeah. Uh, so what I'm thinking, I want to kind of fix the, the stuff. Um, mm -mm. Uh, we have the same problem. Yeah, I remember some time ago there was an interesting incident when somebody from Israel was, like made a pull request to somebody who from Iran and they had to reject that pull request because Iranian government didn't allow to interact with anybody from Israel or something like that. So like I remember some time ago there was like incident like that. Uh, so... Yeah, because if they didn't do that, they could get into trouble for like accepting that pull request, like into legal for our trouble. Mm. Yeah, sucks. Mm. <clears throat> mm. All right, so let me fix the particles when we collide with uh, with the bar and stuff like that. Okay, so particle. Uh, particle burst, right? Particle burst. Where do we use a particle burst? Uh, so this is a target color. So this is fine. Uh, so this is a bar color. Let me try to find the bar color. Uh -huh. So this is a bar color. This is how we're gonna do all that. Cool T-shirt. Thank you. This is a very old T-shirt. I think I. Uh, my mom bought this t-shirt for me when I was in school. Um, I'm 30 years old already. <laughs> I'm wearing this t-shirt since I was in school. So yeah, it's very cool. <laughs> anyway, uh, I don't really change my clothing very often. Um, that's what I'm saying. Um, so particle burst, so, and this one, proj color, and here I can do some other stuff. Make. Uh, back to full one one one. Good investment, yes, it is good investment. It looks new. Yeah, I took a great care of it. Well, I mean, I wasn't wearing it for like ten years. <laughs> it's just like relatively recently discovered it, so that's probably why it um, actually in a good state, uh, more or less. Wear twice in the entire lifetime, yeah. So that's how we do that, actually. Okay, so I fixed the particles. You know what I want to do, chat? I want to do something cool. I want to do something cool. I want to deploy this shit to GitHub pages and let you play this game. I, I can do that. Like, I can straight up deploy that shit and let you play this game. So one of the problems that I have with this project is that I couldn't share it unless you have a compiler, unless you have a Jai compiler. But if you don't, like, you have no way to build this thing. So now I can let you play this game. You won't have any text, though, and you won't have any way to pause the game. Um, so... Yeah, but because that's fine. I, at least you will see some particles because particles are cool, right? Particles are pretty cool. Okay, so the only thing I need to do, if I understand correctly, is I need to commit three files. Uh, so main wasn't fixed. Oh, look, the, the final file is not even that big, 127 kilobytes. And this is with a lot of dead code of the giant runtime that is never called. If we invest some time into getting rid of the dead code, I think we can make it even smaller. Um, all right, but I mean, it's it's later. It's for later. Uh, so this is index.html, uh, load.js, and fixed button. Okay. Uh, upload, uh, add wasm version of the of the game. I'm gonna push that right into the repo. Uh, okay, that was relatively fast, so let's go to a J break. Let's go to J break and let's go to settings. Mm. Uh, pages, 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 pages. Okay, so this is going to be source, this is going to be master, 
uh, and I'm gonna save that. Please don't ask for. Okay, so that's that was cool. So we'll have to wait a little bit. Uh, wait a second. So the site is already published. So we'll have to wait a little bit until the, the caches update and stuff like that. Uh, yep, yep, yep. So we can probably follow the progress. Oh, here it is. Here is the progress of deployment. So we can take a look at that here. Mm. We can just play locally by cloning the repo, but then you'll need to have to install Git, right? Uh, but uploading, like deploying it, makes it possible to just like open it in a browser. You know what I mean? So that's even cooler. That's even freaking cooler, mate. So we're deploying, as you can see. And it is deployed. Holy shit. And it works. Okay, okay. So to start playing, you have to press space. Now, chat. Enjoy. How about it? Hell yeah. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna put that in the description. Deployed version of the game. And after that, I'm pretty sure, 100% after that, John will kick me out of the beta. I'm pretty sure. So that was my last Jai stream, 100%. So yeah, thanks everyone who's watching me right now. I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. So chat, chat. Tell me, tell me, tell me. Does it play arrow key? No, 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 no. W S D. It's a W S D. Actually, it's A and D. Right. It's A and D. Uh, it's not arrows. It's A and D. Try A and D. Uh, yeah. Well, like in a shooter, you know. Like, I mean, who uses arrows f to play games? Come on. Um, D doesn't work for some reason. Okay. Okay, so it works. So it works for somebody, right? So some people say that something doesn't work, but apart from that, D works. Okay. Got your hyper. Uh, it works great. Okay, so how does the game feel? So, like, I I really like how it feels when it hits the target and it bursts the particle. I think it's actually kind of cool, right? Okay, it's it's fine for people, right? And and also it's cool that the particles interact with the environment and stuff like that. Um, okay, that's so cool. Holy shit! I like that. Super so smooth. All right, so we managed to actually run the Jai game in a browser. That's pretty cool. Um, feels smooth. Okay. Uh, all right, so I guess that's it for today. Thanks, everyone, who's watching me right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you on the next Azuzin session in the future. So, yeah. Thanks everyone for watching. Thank you for all of the subscriptions and stuff like that. I love you all. Mm -hmm.